So today's video is all about learning how to do auto tiling inside of Godot. And with auto tiling, it allows you to take a sprite sheet, set it up in a way that we can actually just be able to select our auto tile and paint the track on. And it will automatically pick the piece that best fits what we need. Now I've already set the first one up and if we take a look around the edges, we've got the, the um, collision on where the car can drive and can't drive. So we'll take a look at that as well today. So let's start up right from scratch. So I'll just go ahead, we'll close this. We won't save any of the changes and we'll make it uh, brand new. So let's start with a 2D scene and I wanna add a tile map. I'm gonna rename my node 2D. Uh, and I'm gonna call mine track two. The first one was called track one. And then I'm gonna select that tile map again. And the inspector's not showing it. Why not? Let's quickly save this off. I'm gonna save it into my tracks, which are in scenes, tracks, and I'll just save it here for now. I'm gonna close it, open it back up. Hopefully this fixes it. There we go, it finally showed up. Now I've recently updated to the latest uh, beta. Maybe I shouldn't have. Okay, so anyway, with the tile map selected, I'm going to uh, select the tile set. I'm gonna make a new one. I'll click on it again to open it up. And let's go and add our first tile. Now I've already got it full screen. You can hit shift 12 to make it, well, not full screen. Maybe you only want it half screen. Completely up to you. When I'm first working on it, I like to go full screen. So shift F12. Okay, so let's add the sprite sheet. I'm gonna click the plus. And I'm going to navigate to Kenny's assets. So if we started off from the, the base, you'd have to go through all the different folders, wherever it is you've saved it. And this is the sprite sheet for me. So I'll double click. You'll get something presented to you like this. Uh, you might not have the blue lines automatically there for you. You get those from the snapping options. And you can't see the snapping options from here until we create a new auto tile. So we'll click that. We have a region option. When you create your first region, I'm just going to click anywhere you get the snapping options. And if we turn this off and on, now you can see the actual blue lines. Uh, I want a bit bigger than this. So as we click and drag, we notice that it snaps to these. I want it to be a bit bigger. So I'm gonna go 32 by 32. I know my tiles themselves are 128 by 128. So I'm gonna come down to here. We're gonna make this 128 by 128. And I'm also gonna switch the uh, bit mask, uh, three by three minimal. This actually will break our grid up when we're doing the bit masks into uh, nine sections. We'll take a look at that in a bit. But I'm gonna set that up. Uh, we should be good here. I'm gonna do a quick save. And let's set that first region up. So I'm gonna click in the first block. I'm gonna drag down to the last corner of the last one. We're gonna let it go. Now I've got my whole region selected. If I click anywhere else on here, I'm gonna lose that region. We can go ahead, click off of it onto any of these other tabs, and then, oh, we can go ahead and set the priority, let's, or the icon. The icon is what's gonna be shown, uh, essentially like the cursor. So I'm just gonna pick the default one. And let's jump straight into that bit mask that we talked about. I'm gonna use control, middle mouse wheel. This allows me to zoom in, and then I can hold down the middle mouse button to scroll around. Okay, so bit mask, um, we talked about how it was in a nine by nine. So if I start clicking, and I'm actually gonna turn the snapping off because it'll look a little easier. You can left click to add a bit mask, right click to remove it. And essentially what you want for the bit mask is uh, when we're painting these down, the sides with the bit mask, uh, they can join together, like they'll touch. So for this example, I'm gonna pick the part of the track I want the player to be able to drive on. In this case, that's the dirt. Now I'm gonna allow him to go off the road, you know, a little bit. And let's keep up with that. So right here. Now this piece, you can drive on any part of it. And likewise, when it's making the auto tile for us, uh, anything at the top, it's gonna be like, okay, I need a piece that has a bit mask with three red on the bottom part, which case is here. So I'm gonna quickly go through and paint them. So in this case, when I put this one down, if we look at the pieces that can go beside it, uh, at the top, 
Uh, we can put one that has just three red along the bottom. So there's two so far that we have. This one has three red at the bottom. This one has three red at the bottom. And out of the ones we've done, we have th there's no other ones. But if we look to the side here, we have red, red, and nothing. Well, this one will fit here. So if we were to paint and then just do one block here, this would go there. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, when we go and start painting it into our scene, it should make a little, a little bit more sense to you. So we'll go ahead, we'll just keep adding where they can drive. Now here's kind of an interesting one where we have um, only one not done. If we take a look at the rest. Oh yeah, we do have one, so that should still fit. We can always come in and adjust these if we mess them up. And I'm gonna do every single one of the ones that we have. Now we're not gonna take a look at alternate tiles that we can use. The, this whole system is gonna be redone in Godot 4. So I'll probably wait to the end before I put out a video on how to fully take advantage of this. But for making a track right now, this will be more than enough for what we need. All right, so I'm gonna save it. I think I've got them all done. So with it saved, I'll come into my track two and make sure it's selected and we can just start painting. And before we do, we do have to change the cell size in here as well. So remember it was 128 by 128. 128, 128, 128. So there's four spots you gotta change it. And we'll leave that at 16. Everything else looks good. I chronically save. We'll select that. And I did something wrong. Ah, oh, there we go. <laughs> All right. Oops, click off, click back on to the right size. Now as I paint, looks like I'm getting my track. So we'll go ahead, paint out some track that you want. Now when I'm painting my tracks, I find it easier if I actually go ahead and include the car that I'm gonna be driving all on my track so that I can see that. So we hit this little chain link up here it's going to show you all of the scenes that you already made so far. We want the car one. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab the car. You can go ahead and position it. So think about how many people you're going to make this game for that you want racing. For my case, it's only going to be one to two players max. So you want to make sure you have enough room. Um, and don't have a child to your track. Have a child to the, uh, well, not the tile map, sorry. Have a child as a child of the track itself. So we'll click the tile map. And it probably should be a little thicker, maybe around there for two players. At least I'd say for there for two players. Now, there's no real like, size that you have to do. You can make this thing absolutely huge. Uh, we could, you know, make it turn up this way. Uh, there's no constraints. You can go outside of these lines if you want. You can make absolutely huge dynamic, well, maybe not dynamic, but huge uh, twisting, winding tracks go all over the place. Do whatever you want, but I, to make things shorter, I've gone ahead and made a track down there, track one. But before we look at that, we got to add the collisions to this. So I'm going to quickly control Z to undo that part. <laughs> I'm going to zoom in a bit and let's start adding the collisions around the edge. And we can do that inside of the tile set. So we'll click into the tile set, click the tile itself. Uh, I click the, the number one. This will show me all the ones that are open. And if I click back onto the actual region, it highlights it. Now, I was working on bit masks last. That's why we're seeing the red. Now we're gonna work with collisions. I like to have snapping on for collisions. And specifically, I'm gonna turn this one on. Now, this allows me to really get in there and snap the collisions on. Now, we wanna put the collisions on the area we don't want the player to be able to drive in. And we could just do one row here. I think I am going to do that. We can play around with the sizing of the else, but I'm just going to stick with the one. So we have two options for making the collisions. One is a box. And if we click it and then click in the first tile here, let's try that again. There we go. It selects the whole tile, but we have these four pieces in the corner. I'm actually going to drag this up here. And this will allow uh, the person when they're driving to go a little bit off row, but not too much. We could make a smaller snapping option and, you know, let's say if we did 16 by 16 and give a little bit more room, I'm perfectly fine with this. Season it to your taste. I'm good there. 
But let's take a look here. For this one, again, I want to allow them to go off the road a bit. Uh, I'm going to go with the polygon tool on this one. So I'll click here. Click here. Click, and I'm clicking on the wrong one. Let's select the tile first, then click on the polygon tool. Make sure it's the active one. Then we can click, click. See how I have the two dots already? Click, 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 and then click on the start to close it off. There we go. And then maybe you want to have it like this. You can move the points around. I think I am going to put it here so on the, on the corners you can't go too far off the road, maybe. Maybe I would have been better off to go with the 16 by 16, but again, it doesn't matter. So this one, we have no collider. We want to be able to drive on all of that. So the next one, this one, I'm going to grab the polygon. And when you start getting into bigger track pieces or bigger track sets, uh, the case of these ones over here, um, it's going to take you a while to get these done. But you'll have a much more dynamic looking track. You can have angles and stuff like that in it. And I've got a few more to do. I'm going to save this off, just jump into our track so we can look at it. Now, in order to see those colliders, we have to go up here and click the show collisions. And when I turn those on, you can see the ones that I've already done. And it looks like I've messed up on this one corner one. I've got uh, colliders for all of it. So I'm going to go in and fix that one. So we'll go into the tile map and it's the white bottom left corner. We'll come in. Again, I like to click the one so I know which one it is. And it's white in the bottom corner. Is this it? Yes. So I'm going to zoom in, come down, make sure it is the active one. And to get rid of this cloud that we already have on here, because I need one that's um, that I can shape, we can just hit shift delete with it selected. And now we'll go ahead and get rid of the collider. So let's put the one on that we actually need for this shape, which is uh, just this. So I'll save that off, come back into our track, and we take a look. Uh, sometimes you have to repaint them to get, the, get it to show. So we'll right-click to get rid of it, left-click to put it back on. And I haven't done the one with the sides, but you get the idea of how to paint. So go through, paint all your colliders. When you're done, it should look something like this. I'll open up track one. Let's go take a look at the tile map. Click the one. And as you can see here, I use uh, smaller snap settings. But if I come under collisions, we can see where I've painted them all in. Let me zoom in a bit. So on this one, I did 16 by 16. Um, again, play around with it. Find the, the values that you like. And when you race around the track now, I'll just go ahead and start this one up. They'll smash into the wall. Now we do have to make one edit to the car. I'll just go backwards. We'll now collide into the, those colliders. We can't go any further. Uh, in order to really test out our track, we need the camera to follow us. So in order to do that, I'm going to go into the car scene. So we click this little uh, scene button here. That brings us into the car. Let's go Shift F12, bring that down. And with the car selected, we're going to add a camera 2D right here. And with the camera selected, I'm going to come over to current. And we're going to select that. That means this is the current camera. This is the camera that is going to be used inside of our game. So I'm going to come back to track one. And now when we start it, the camera follows our car. So it looks like I need a little bit more speed <laughs> on the car. That's fine. We can play around with all these uh, these settings. Actually, with the car selected, let's do, uh, I don't know, 1,500 horsepower. There we go. We're a little bit faster. Again, as you progress in your game, you might want to have power-ups that make you faster. But there we go. We can now drive around. We can hit the, uh, the colliders. We can't go off the track. And in the next video, let's set up some timer, some sort of timer. So we'll have uh, waypoints. And as you drive through them, we can either like add time or just have it be like a, a checkpoint as you're going around the map.
And this will come into play better when we actually have multiple players because you can just have one person that reaches the checkpoint and it adds, you know, five seconds or whatever it is that you want for your track uh, to the global timer. Maybe you just keep racing until the timer's done or to whoever reaches the end. So there we go. Our first introductory to auto tiling. Really simple inside of Godot. Uh, keep in mind this system is getting changed inside of Godot 4. You can go and take a look at some of the, the changes they're making. It looks way different. So I'm probably not going to go you know, really too, in too depth here. Uh, just enough to cover what we need to make a track. But anyway, if you make some tracks, go ahead and uh, post some videos of it so we can see what they look like. Maybe we get some inspiration. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.